Do you want to know how to run a perfect SaaS demo even if you hate selling? Great, because today I'll cover exactly that. Now, if you're a B2B SaaS founder, we will get you extra 20 qualified demos a month in 6 months or less, or we will refund you in full at SaaS Camp Accelerator. And now, let's dive in. Everything begins with rapport, because if they don't like you, it's making everything way and way harder. If you don't have initial rapport, look, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. We don't want that. That's why we start with a small warm smile and asking them where you based, just basically some intro question. Please don't spend 5-15 minutes on rapport building. I've done this mistake many times. You don't want to be doing this because, yes, yeah, sure, if you're selling a thing which has over million annual contract, sure, it might make sense to even go play golf with them. But high chance, if you're watching this, you usually would not be selling at such high price check. And that's why, look, a couple minutes is plenty. Just to confirm, do you have a hard stop in 30 minutes? This time management thing is going to be allowing you to understand how to manage your call properly, because if you understand that you're spending quite some time on the qualification process and it seems like you don't have time to give them the demo the right way and you know that they have to go when it, the timer hits 30 it makes sense to reschedule for another time later this week because if you don't ask this you may face some stupid scenarios when halfway through your demo they'll be like okay thanks but i need to go by you don't want this to be happening so better to prevent it by asking this at the start now after you done this initial report building you set the frame and i would say that the frame is potentially 30 percent of what makes the sale if not 60 or more just because who has the power controls everything and the frame in sales means who is the, in the position of power and basically if you don't have a power frame this means that you are needy and it's you who needs them to buy and this makes the whole sales game way harder ideally they must be super needy for the solution and you are chilling there sitting like this <laughs> not smoking but you understood me because if you don't have the frame in control in your uh, direction you will be fighting to get the sale from them and all the people who start in sales are usually trying to accomplish that you don't want to be doing this even if you haven't closed a single person in your entire life yet basically the way you want to approach it is to understand okay what's the roi am i giving to them with my solution and typically in b2b space you want to calculate the roi they are getting after purchasing your thing then what are the pain points they're struggling with and how you are there to help them out and not the other way around so please don't be needy neediness will kill your pipeline now you set the frame with a couple quick uh, lines today i'd like to dive into specifics of your business hear what you feel are the specific challenges keeping you from moving forward and share more about our solution if i see a fit this part here about i see a fit it might seem as nothing important but basically you want to realize that you don't want to be selling to every single person and even this small comment does play quite a crucial role, role in your demo because this would give a small signal to them that you are not there to sell to every single person that comes but to actually understand whether they need the thing or not and based on that they will either be getting the offer from you or not so then you dive into information gathering and the reason why we are doing information gathering here and we're not jumping straight into okay here are my features is because if you don't know their problems how can you even solve and diagnose them you cannot and that's how a lot of people doing b2b SaaS sales make this mistake which i usually correct to them because i've been making the same one and this is putting your features on top of their pain points you don't want to be doing this instead 
You ask qualifying questions to see if they are a fit for your solution. You shall be the one leading the discussion, not the other way around. Come up with 5 to 7 qualifying criteria a business should fit for them to absolutely get value and positive ROI from your product. If they should have X to get value and they don't match this criteria, then disqualify them. I've been making this mistake trying to sell to every single person on earth who just shows some attention to my product. Look, you don't need to be doing this. You can become a billionaire selling to one in a thousand just because you are very selective in terms of customers you choose to work with. And this is how you want to be treating business, especially in B2B and high ticket B2B side. You don't want to be selling to every single person who jumps on a call with you. Instead, ideally, you need to be disqualifying majority of them just because their business does not have the parameter to get the right amount of value from it. You, this might be the revenue size, the employee count, some uh, way their business is structured or other. This way, you should not try to sell to everyone who gets on a call with you. You will have prospects not fitting the right criteria. It only becomes cringe when you are forcing it. So this part about if you hate selling, look, I hated selling myself and I haven't met a single person in this world who would be just right from the start, oh, I love it so much, without going through thousands of rejections in the first place. The way you stop making your calls so cringe is by you not forcing your product to every single person there. As long as you seek to help to the other party, as long as you are trying your best to understand what is the real issue and how you can solve it for them basically this will stop be stop being so hard for you so please keep that in mind urgency this might be one of the key factors in b2b sales because if they have no urgency guess what they can wait years before they go and make a decision to purchase or not to purchase from you find out what it is costing them now not being at their goal they feel no urgency this means they will not commit it's always easier and safer not to buy anything than to risk and purchase things that's how our brains are structured but basically if some people are pitching you different offers your brain will always be finding reasons not to go for them rather than to explain to yourself yes i do need this thing for a couple of reasons sales are emotional and you want to Play, not play but help people uh, drive their emotions in the right way your role is to build the perception in their mind that it is unsafe to be where they are and you achieve it by asking implication questions and digging deeper in why this is not good to be where they are is again you are not the one saying that you ask the questions you help them drive the conclusion and tell it to you on the call. When you successfully do that, they will be sitting there in a chair very, very hyped to hear what you got there to show them just because you build this momentum in their own mind so much. And this is a good thing. Another pro tip here, which I will drop, is that for years I have been having on the checklist trying to become friends with every single person who gets on a call with me. Look, yes, you want to be having a certain amount of report, but please keep that in mind that before the person purchased from you, you are not friends with them. Yes, again, styles change when it comes to high ticket temporary price sales, but you want to be selective with who you work with. And look, if you are trying to make friends with them and you're forcing it, this puts you in a weaker position because you are not there to be liked by everyone you're there to do your job as a doctor to understand is what the business is struggling from and whether your solution could help with it desires figure out where are they heading with their business and where they want to end up in 3 6 12 months from now once they reach their goal figure out how this will affect their business you achieve this by asking them questions you very rarely can make a sale without knowing what's their end goal and that's exactly why you do want to build up this bridge of point a where they are point b where they want to be at and you act as a bridge builder helping them get from point a to point b if you get this desire thing successfully and you 
on a very deep level understand what is the real reason they want to be getting there what the, this will unlock for them in terms of opportunities you will have many more cards in your sleeve in order to close them next summarize their problems in one sentence this will help you show to them that you do understand what is going on you are connected with them on a deep level and they can trust you if you do this successfully because here you want to drop something like okay to make sure i understood your situation correctly your main problem is this and also this and these are not allowing you to hit the desired goal is it correct once you get this ones right this will help you build even more trust with the prospect because they will know that yes you do understand them next you think you want to do is pre-handle objections great i think i've got clarity on where you are and where you're aiming to get is there anything else you feel we haven't covered that you think i need to know nice then if you'd like i can share more how about how i would approach solving your problems you do this quick thing just to make sure there is nothing left outside the table you want to pre-handle objections to get them think okay does this person know everything there is is that they need to know about my specific problem or not they sometimes may share some additional details with you and guess what you can use these additional details in your future pitch to close them easier now you show the product see you don't start a call by pitching because how can you know how to solve their problems if you have no idea what are their problems allow them to feel understood first then show the demo of your product and walk them through how it solves the issues throughout your extensive qualification process and your discovery process you've been able to learn quite a lot about their business now you've basically collected all these cards to play them here you mentioned the problem one and then you elaborate on this problem one once again and you explain that our product solves it like this you also talked about problem two and our products will solve it this way as it does for other people already and you also mentioned that these are stopping you from not getting to your goal what do you think here again the more complex the solution the more problems you want to hit right for instance if you're selling i don't know a multi-million dollar thing sure you might have to hit the bullseye not on just one and two problems but potentially five seven ten and more and only after you tick all these boxes correctly would you be able to get them to really believe that your solution can help them with their thing you get your feedback and usually if you've uh, disqualified the wrong prospects and you are only uh, got the qualified prospects to the step many people will be like yo this is exactly what we need sounds awesome how can i buy it or something like that sometimes they will have some obje um, not objections but uh, concerns and they will go ahead and ask you okay but what about this what about that and here they might be having the tons of questions usually the more questions they have this means the worse you've done your demo of the product because you want to handle pre-handle all the objections while showing the product for instance you can come up with a list of top 10 reasons why people would not be purchasing your product and put them inside your demo then while pitching your product you basically walk them through all of them this way when they get to sharing their feedback they have no way to refuse it but to say that your solution is ideal then we get into objection handling and what i want to explain to you is that objection handling appears as a result of poor discovery if you've done discovery process perfectly you would know their situation perfectly and again if you understood their situation uh, this way you'd be able to pitch them great prepare for the top three objections they may have versus your product in advance because you don't want to always be coming up with creative ideas on the call yes sometimes you always need to have some creative thinking skills there but the best people who close most sales guess why are they the best yes because they're able to discover 
problems effectively and also they are able to pitch effectively. Pitching effectively means overcoming potential objections just while walking the prospects through the demo process. And pro tip here, if they say you lack this feature, ask if it's a deal breaker. And if it is, tell them that it will be ready within a few weeks max, plus incentivize them with a bonus. I decided to include this one here just because you like this feature for early stage products this one over comes up so often that it look is just uh, one of the most typical objections you will always be handling because there will always be another person who will say but how about this thing which i really need and then you might just uh, go and can't do some like counter attack by saying is it a deal breaker okay if it is yeah sure uh, then you understand it and again if it is a deal breaker there are again ways to overcome it because this is not as you just build a stone monument and you have to find the buyer for this exact stone monument but i'm sure that majority of things that they will have in mind your team and you can build within two to five hours max if you really need to again it's a complex thing you want to know them in advance that yes we can get this built after you make the payment but keep in mind that yes it may take one to two months please don't set unrealistic expectations the easy way for you to not be setting any unrealistic expectations is to just say uh, within a few weeks max and this is you not making any bold promises now close them into a sale or into a follow-up call majority of time dealing with b2b sales you will have multiple calls but if you try to accomplish everything in one call usually this will not be happening because it would take two three four fives and then going to higher ticket seven ten and more calls to get the sale happen guess what you need to be doing throughout this process is to consistently scheduling every single next call into the calendars because if you don't have a next call scheduled this can easily be forgotten two hours after and you don't want this to be happening and again the way you overcome it is by you always having a next call scheduled if they say but okay fine we are already purchasing so it's not needed then you say okay cool then how about then the next friday will be our onboarding call or in case for instance we don't have the time by then to complete the payment then we just walk through some uh, details so we can uh, finalize this part and if you're able to get the payment then it just turns into an onboarding call which you will be doing and advanced level with all of this is that you wanted to step away from it because if you stick to the script too much you will be missing out on many opportunities to dig deeper and you will not be able to listen them to the extent that you really want to listen and understand them so after putting reps in try to stay away from the script you want to have a framework but going through a checklist of 40 questions non-stop will cause you lost opportunities when this is required and here i will share the advanced free flow checklist as i call it which you can try to get closer to usually depending on your sales skills again if you've never sold a thing in your life this might take you 50 to 100 calls before you're able to really put this everything away and just to focus on what's happening if you've got more experience you can try to go right for the shorter free flow checklist because you are able to communicate without that much stress and so let me quickly go through it frame a structure to the call no matter who you're selling to this is crucial you want to outline the structure to make everything go smoothly does the prospect realize there is a problem to solve no problem no sale this one is clear is there an urge to change if they have no hurry typically for instance when you're selling to garments why i find it challenging to sell to garments because they are never in a hurry unlike a business that can run out of money and that's why you want to make it obvious for them that it is urgent to change the situation that they have clarify what they think they really need with this one i meant that it's one situation when they just tell you oh we want more customers for instance we want more customers in reality can mean thousand other hidden problems and you want to identify the right one you do this by identifying and by asking implication questions and 
we want more customers. Okay, can you please share more on that? And this is when they would really be starting to share about the real problems. And what I meant with this point here is that many times the initial thing that the prospect mentions would not be the real problem. And that's why it's your role to dig deeper and identify the real reason why they're struggling. And five, concise them, matching their pains and goals. Again, you don't want to have one script which you are giving to every single prospect because you always want to be customizing it on the spot, um, in some places at least, depending on the situation. And only this way you would be able to hit bullseye on every single person because there is no one solution fits all approach, especially when it comes to higher ticket. Now, attention SaaS founders wanting to hit 1 million ARR. If you are currently running a B2B SaaS startup and want to grow, apply to SaaS Camp Accelerator, where we will help you with your sales and marketing. And the link is sascamp.co. We'll build you dynamic marketing systems, which we installed for over 70 other startups. And if for some reason you won't add extra 20 qualified demos a month in six months or less, will just refund you in full. Thanks a lot for making it to the end of the video. If you have any more questions, just drop them in the comments and I wish you to have a fantastic day.